So years later, I'm giving this talk that you're describing, this lecture on early, one of these early lectures on quasi crystals. And Feynman was in the audience and listening very attently. And I was expecting him to interrupt, but he didn't interrupt at any time during the lecture itself. He waited till it, it was over. And he came up and said, well, this is impossible. First of all, he is the person that really brought me into physics. When I, when I went to Caltech as an undergraduate, I didn't really know much about physics at all. For some reason, that was just a missing part of my science education or a weak part of my science education. Uh, within a few weeks, I, I encountered Feynman and Feynman lectures on physics and I was converted. Uh, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do in, in science or in physics, I should say. Uh, but I tried to watch closely Feynman, who was my hero, quickly became my hero to see, you know, what, what he, what, which way he would point, uh, point me. Um, and one of the things I did when I was a junior is with my roommate, we went to visit Feynman. We asked him if he'd be willing to uh, give a course that uh, came to be dubbed, dubbed Physics X. Mm -hmm. it turns out he had done something like this a number of years ago, mm -hmm. uh, slightly different format, but would he come and give this course, uh, Physics X, in which he would come each week. It's an unofficial course, um, wasn't on the registrar's you know, list, uh, and, he'd give, and he'd just come and talk about whatever you wanted to talk about, whatever physical phenomena you wanted to talk about. And so that's what happened. Every week he would come, and he'd, he'd come and ask him a question about something. It had to be something about something you, you observed in nature or you, you know, knew about existing in nature, and he would do his best to tackle it. And um, what I learned from that was, what I expected to learn from that interaction was um, that uh, he would be pointing heavily to the work he himself had done in elementary particle physics. But in fact, we hardly discussed particle physics at all. The subjects roamed all over the map and every subject was fascinating. Uh, so what I learned from that is that physics, um, the opportunity for physics discoveries can be found everywhere. In, in everything, and everything is interesting. Everything was interesting to Feynman, so everything was interesting to us. And he could just, he could describe everything in such a way that uh, he could tackle anything in such a way that was fascinating, and captivating. Um, uh, and um, that was an important influence on me, because in my own research, you know, I kind of followed a path that began with particle physics to begin with, but then it soon began wandering to other areas, such as the topic we're talking about, the topic of this book. But in another interaction with him, I was doing some research with him on various topics. And, um, and you know, Feynman was known for giving people a really hard time in lectures and calling them foolish and stupid and things like that. And so, you know, I had some of that. I'd come to his office and present an idea and explain to me an idea whether that it was foolish or stupid. But, it, you know, to me, it was always, it was never insulting. It was done in a certain, you know, certain way of enthusiasm and it was consistent. But what really convinced me that it was, you know, I should take it in stride was there was one time when, you know, he accused me of something, getting something stupid and wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, and it involved, involved a Super Bowl and the way you can, Super Bowl can spin and bounce. And fortunately I had a Super Bowl with me and I demonstrated to him um, that in fact, uh, I wasn't sure how it was going to work out. We tried the experiment that he was proposing. And sure enough, it turned out that what I had predicted in my equations was correct. And he turned around and said, ah, oh, stupid, referring to himself. And then I realized he would use that term for anybody who got something wrong, to, more to jolt them into paying attention. Something interesting was going on here. You ought to pay attention and not simply overlook it because mm -hmm. something to be learned here. So, okay, so years later, uh, I'm giving um, this talk that you're describing, this lecture on early, one of these early lectures on quasi crystals. And um, Feynman was in the audience and listening very attently. And I was expecting him to interrupt, but he didn't interrupt at any time during the lecture itself. He waited till it, it was over. Um, and um, he came up and said, um, uh, Well, this is impossible, you know. Uh, People were leaving the room, but it echoed throughout the room that, you know, it was clear that, you know, Feynman was objecting to this idea that there could be this new form of matter, even though I had done my best to present, you know, lots of evidence of it, including even in demonstration of it. Uh, but I could tell from his smile that it was, it was the impossible, like, you know, like he would call me stupid or imp something impossible in the past. He was really challenging me to, to prove my point. 
And, and what he then asked me to do was, I had done a demonstration in front of the uh, lecture to show what happens when you shine, um, well, it'd be like if you shine electrons through, the, through such a hypothetical material. In this case, I was using a laser and a, a slide which had the same pattern as the arrangement of atoms would have in the material. Uh, and what I had shown is that it produced a pattern that was supposed to be impossible according to all the standard textbooks on solids. And that was the point of the lecture, that there are these new possibilities that were, had been considered impossible that were now impossible. So having declared the whole idea impossible, he then walked out to me and said, I want to see that demonstration again. So we turned off the lights, we turned back on the laser, we did the demonstration again. He looked back and forth between what was on the wall and the laser. He picked up the slide, he looked at the slide, he put it back in. And yeah, he said, he just smiled, gave a huge smile, said, well, that really is impossible. And that was, you know, and then you know, slowly walked out of the room with a big smile on his face. And uh, so I felt there was my chance to sort of return a favor that he had given me and giving me a, so many thrills in physics. It was my chance to return a thrill to him. And I think he appreciated the present. <laughs>